Have you ever seen a leper from a close? Uh, because there are still some lepers on earth in some remote places, but now there are various ways of curing leprosy. But at the time of Jesus, there was no cure and they were expelled from the community from day one, as soon as the disease was spotted by the doctor and they had to agitate a little bell, dealing, 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 leper, so that people could stay away from them. So it was a horrible way of ending up your life progressively. Now, there is another disease that is like leprosy, but spiritual one. Do you know its name? It's called pride. If leprosy destroys the body, progressively attacking all the limbs. Pride and vanity, but especially pride, the most dangerous sin, is making of us a leper. That means a big sinner that destroys our soul and destroys our capacity to love, to depend on God, to depend on others, making ourselves the center of the universe for people who have a big, big pride, a big ego. So in the Gospel today, what do we see? We see ten lepers coming to Jesus for healing. Please, Lord, heal us. And what does Jesus do? Normally, he heals people on the spot. You remember the blind man of Jericho who was healed on the spot. You remember the paralytic man, he was healed on the spot. You remember the woman with a hemorrhage for 12 years? As soon as she touched Jesus' fringes, she was healed on the spot. But here, it doesn't seem that Jesus wants to heal them on the spot. What does Jesus say to the ten lepers? He sent them away, go to the priest, but he doesn't heal them. At least not on the spot. Why does he do that? and on the way they are healed. So Jesus wanted to highlight the role of the priests set by God to be mediators between the sinners and God by offering the sacrifices. And he asked them an act of obedience, right? An act of trust. And on the way, his mercy towards them healed them before they even reached Jerusalem and the priest. So what would you have done if you had been one of the ten lepers healed on the way? Would you have continued your way? As, oh, okay, I am healed, fine. And I just go back to my family and say hi to everyone. Only one came back. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus is really surprised. Is there only that Samaritan to come back and to thank God for his favor. Where about the others have gone? Where are they? Then Jesus said to the Samaritan guy, your faith has saved you. He didn't say thank me because I saved you. But again, like in many other places in the gospel, he wants the people to understand that what is the source of healing is not just him, it's our faith, our trust in God, our perseverance in faith. So there are two lessons in this Gospel, as you can see. First, do we thank God for all the favors we have received? Or are we the kind of person to always grumble, criticize, only see the negative things, and does not acknowledge, first of all, the great gift of God who gave us his beloved Son to save us from our sins and eternal death. And then, do we thank God for the least favors we receive in our life, starting with the gift of faith, of hope and charity? Do we thank God even sometimes for suffering as a way to be in communion with those who suffer? Or do we never thank God for anything and only criticize, murmur, who are mad at God when he doesn't give us what we want. So it's a big invitation to thanksgiving and a big invitation to make many acts of trust and hope in our life. Because if Jesus makes us wait 
before giving us what we think is good for our soul. He has his plan and we need to trust. Okay, God bless you all. Mm -hmm.